This right here is Jackson here. Allen. This man around. right here. So we became friends, well, two, three years ago, we were driving down the freeway in Minnesota? Iowa. 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 And uh, Diesel Dave and I, were, we were out of town in the rental we were car. In Iowa, and we're like, we were holy <laughs> look at that cab over. And we both look over and it's just this cab over. That one right there. And we look and there's a long bearded dude. And we're taking pictures, waving, like whatever. See you later. I get a message on Instagram from a gal named Haley, right? Yeah. yeah. And that happens to be his wife. She's like, that's my husband. I saw, she, I saw him on your DM. And then we became best Just, bros. Yep. He's a uh, bull hauler. Yep. Hauls a lot of cattle. We needed a second rig to bring back this. Uh, you guys don't even know what we're doing yet. I haven't even told you yet. But basically, we needed a second rig. So Jax is the man. This man right here yeah. is, he's like smoking the bandit on steroids. Right? A <laughs> few little tricks around the truck stop. He taught like us about the, cattle. He's teaching us about trucking. The big gulp. The big I, gulp. I carry legit. Wait, like the, the handle insulated. mug? He walks, in, he walks in with the big gulp. I'm like, I didn't even know if people still did that. You know, the plastic one yes, that's like yes, all yeah. faded from the yeah, sun. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick it on your floor. He the one that refills are like 32 cents? No, in? no, no. Free yeah. for this guy. Free. <laughs> yeah, we fuel up and they're like, well, that's free, sir. And Jim's like, <laughs> of course like, it is. Of course it is. We could have been free, free drinks over there because we're filling up semis. I need mm -hmm. to get a mug. And all you need to do is have a mug. So, anyways, this is Jax. He's the man. Um, here's his Instagram right there. Make it nice. And uh, he's helping us bring back these excavators. So, you boys ready? Sweet, sweet. Let's roll. Tell me about this truck. What year is it? It's 89. 89 Peterbilt. Came out of Iowa originally. Made a brief stop in uh, Michigan. Friend did a lot of work to it. And then we brought her back to Montana. Kind of put the finishing touches on. This is my personal favorite. Catches any of the kangaroos that jump up high. <laughs> but no, it saves your bacon, man. Uh, it's got a 3406 B model mechanical cat, which is good. Old reliable. Got it turned up. It's probably about 500 horsepower-ish. Um, I kind of drive it like a grandma because she's my sweet girl. But uh, that's what I got, man. Awesome. Yes, sir. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. You know what we're doing? We're going super trucking. We're going down to southern Utah to pick up two big, big excavators. These machines haven't run for like 10 plus years, just like some of this other equipment we've been picking up lately. And they're like 70, 80,000 pound excavators. So, since we only have one semi, I called my good buddy, Jackson Allen, out of Montana, and he brought down the most beautiful, the most perfect Peterbilt cab over you've ever seen. And uh, we're gonna be southbound. So it's about seven o'clock right now. We're gonna head down and we're gonna go camping. And you guys know we love to, to vlog the camping because tonight, we're camping at a super, super cool spot. In fact, one of my favorite spots in Utah, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet until we get there, but I don't think either of these excavators run. And getting an 80,000 pound excavator loaded onto a low boy that doesn't run, well, let's just say that's gonna be, things are gonna get a little Western. So buckle up and enjoy the show, let's go. It's not very often you'll see us in the same taco place twice. The last time we were here, we had a good experience. The pastor is pretty money, and it's very uncommon to find pastor in a in a taco trailer like this. Normally, it's got to be in the restaurant. So this is uh, this is this is saying something. Last time we ate here, we were stuck for four days. Whoa! And what just happened? Installed it? Oh, here goes the. Now we're in the. Now we're on the. 
sorry town, whatever town we're in, for taking up eight lanes of traffic. Sorry, I've got the green lantern behind us. Is Alex head a light now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just got to the uh, Meadow Hot Springs and it's a Monday night. That's hot pots of San Mississippi. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows it too because there's like 10 cars here on a Monday night. This place is getting pretty popular. So anyways, this is, let me turn my truck off. Get the kids out of here. Trucker showed up. <laughs> so anyways, we're at the Meadow Hot Pots. This is some natural hot springs here near Fillmore. And uh, last time we talked about going somewhere, we, we put out like a thing asking where's some cool places to see uh, on our way to Southern Utah. Cause we know this place really well. In fact, Jack met Jim, his family lives. They messed down the road here? over here. Huh? He was conceived <laughs> here in the hot springs, yeah. yeah. So anyways, this place can become very popular. Um, so we're gonna go see what hippies and tutti fruits are over there bathing. <laughs> tutti yeah, so it's gonna be a party. <laughs> Monday night, for sure. Shindig. No, all those. You homes? just wait and see. They're just kind of bubbling out there. Yep. Can't. Sure. Yep. I bet these were really good when they were hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're like amazingly good. <laughs> That's one of the perks of being a trucker, like a, like a trucker. Yep. Hot, cold, day old, two day old. Don't matter. It's all good. All down the gun. My body is conditioned to just, mm, just push <laughs> it down and out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave on meth bot. That's right. This is the real diesel. The real diesel. The uh, real trucker bot. This is what really happens when you get that point. There goes all of our dry stuff. Seriously? <laughs> all right, Dave. If you're calling the dog, you're on that side of the floor. In the dark. No jack in your hair. Grab onto it before we drop. Ladies and gentlemen, the meadow hot pots. As you can see, it's very warm. What's the temperature? Oh, hey, hold on, hold on. Pick up some flashlight. Hey, I'm gonna grab a flashlight. About five miles west of here, there's this big lava seat that came out of the ground, and it kind of started moving towards town. Yeah. And it built these crazy deep lava tubes. So there's a lot of geothermal activity underneath the ground here in Fillmore. And this, this pot that we're in right here is about 33 feet deep. And they say about once a year, one person dies because they dive down, try to find the bottom, plonk their head on an overhang. So now Hunter's gonna dive to the bottom. <laughs> okay. Like this view this of a dying man. Say something, say something to the camera. Something profound. Okay. <laughs> 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 Gotta get your bum right. Helpers, just bring them from a truck. He's coming up. I got firewood and we put a big fire right there. These are weird. That flashlight like lasts the whole way? Yeah, it did. Way more impressive than it than you. <laughs> did you make it to the bottom? Yeah. Did it cook mine? Yep. Right. Then the two burritos right there. I like how the breath is changing too fast. All right, guys. This is camp for the night. It's not our most uh, beautiful campsite we've ever been to. It's actually a parking lot of the hot pots, but we chose to get in the hot pots, which ended up running a little bit late. And so now it's past midnight. And if we were to drive somewhere else, it could take another hour or so to set up camp. And then we're gonna waste a bunch of time that we could be sleeping. So we're here in the parking lot. We got a little hobo fire going. Got a little potluck. Everybody, uh, we got a cooler full of just about everything you could think of. We got flame and prairie sausages, <laughs> which are actually really good. Tomorrow morning, we're waking up bright and early, getting on the road, because we got to get down get those excavators. Just let it run out on the ground. <laughs> or just get out of your truck and piss. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock this thing up tight. how the truckers roll. Around the truck stops is how we all get out in the morning. Stretch our, stretch our legs, put our furs on. 
groomer beard. It's one thing to be beautiful, but to be beautiful and hairy is a whole nother ball of wax when you're on the road. So got a little, uh, got a few pro tips for you out there. If you're, uh, if you need to really get your groove on, little leave-in conditioner. Dave, come try this stuff. Okay. Little, little leave-in conditioner, kind of like you're starting a fire. Starting, you gotta start the fire. Start the fire. Yeah. Don't be shy. You just gotta really get it in there. Uh huh. Start the fire. Start the fire. Uh -huh. Look at you. Look at that. It, your beard is gonna just thank you down there in the feels, desert. That feels fantastic. Mm -hmm. So good. What is this product? Where can I buy it? Call it Trucker's Magic. <laughs> Pull Trucker's Magic. Oh, no, that seriously smells so good. <laughs> so good. You, you might be able to smell it. Smell. Put your nose right on your computer screen, <laughs> breathe in deep. We're gonna be in the cab over today just sniffing beards. Put in the comments below what you think my beard smells like right now. I think it smells like Fruit Loop. And it ain't like campfire, I tell you that. No, it was like campfire a second ago, but not anymore. With all you... Trucker's magic, tell you what. Oh yeah, that smells nice. It smells thick too. Oh. Bad boy, why is he not filming this? I don't know, man. I'll go find him. You got a little blaster, bro? Blast me, bro. You need to lay out the gas station trees. <laughs> oh, see ya. Uh, you see, ever since Skillshare started sponsoring our channel and gave us access to their online platform with thousands of videos that range from anything from photography to marketing to entrepreneurship. That boy's been a ghost. But you know what? I have an idea where he might be. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of creative people just like Bad Boy come together to quench their thirst for knowledge. Psst. Bad Boy, you in here? Dave, you know Ryan Booth has a class on Skillshare all about cinematography? It turns your video into a movie mind-blowing stuff here on Skillshare. I can't get enough of this website. I can't stop. Learning is so easy and it's full of creative people like me that encourage me, encourage me, Dave, to get better. And less than $10 a month. Half my salary goes to Skillshare. As you can see, learning on Skillshare is highly addictive. And guess what? The first thousand people that click the link right here get a free premium trial to Skillshare. So that thing you've always wanted to learn about, it's time to actually learn about it. Join Skillshare because it's a community full of creative people just like you. All right, so here's the machine. You can see these things have been worked pretty hard. It's got a big old uh, crack up in the boom. Uh, it's been repaired with a big plate. A really wide machine, a really tall machine. Um, again, this thing is just kind of just a beefcake designed for quarry work. Uh, 
Definitely a no frills cab there. Dave, good news. What? No coolant leaks. No coolant leaks because there's no coolant. Oh, exactly. no oh yeah, air cooled. Yeah, wild, huh? Never. Seen that? Never seen that. Why? It's like a giant motorcycle engine because it's Why? simple. It's got a giant turbine on the front that just blows air across all the cylinders. It's cool. It's actually a great idea. Why'd they go away from it? Uh, because Fine. water cooled finally caught up. It's probably seized up a few motors. Yeah. <laughs> probably because of this reason. Hey, bad boy. What's up? You doing bad things up there? Too many bad things in there. <laughs> hey, fun fact, bad boys hung like a horse. <laughs> I got a good story about that. <laughs> of course you do. Okay, guys, uh, we're here. We're at the machines. Um, remember, anytime we come to a recovery like this, we're dealing with very limited information. A couple pictures, and most of the time, the machines have been left for years. The time when we find these machines, it's somebody's bought a piece of property, the machines were on it already. And so they're working with what information the previous owner left on them with. So this was these belong to a quarry that used to be right here, big sandstone quarry. Supposedly, they ran in 2012. They were parked here. They ran when they parked. They've not run since then. Um, my biggest concern is um, there's supposed to be a loader here to help us load these things that they weren't running. Um, well, the loader's not here, so down on another property, which isn't anywhere close. This is a big, big heavy machine, and it's a lot of dead weight. Like, you guys remember the excavator on the island, right? That thing was only like 35, 40,000 pounds. This thing's 70, 75,000 pounds, so it's like double the weight. Um, so it's going to be interesting, but I think there's a good chance we get it running. If we get it running, we're in good shape because this machine will help us move the other machine if for some reason we can't get it running. So if we can get at least one running, we're in good shape. But if not, it's going to be a fight. We'll see. Well, my name is Amos Bunker, and what I know about the excavator is not a whole lot. I mean, we came out here, and I know they've been sitting for a while. This one was the last one that ran before the other one, and... Uh, Let's see, we tried to get it running, we tried to get the motor spinning, but we're not mechanics. We don't have all the tools, we don't have all the supplies, we, especially when you're talking motors this size with this kind of uh, torque and horsepower, we can't just spin that over with a, a crescent wrench. So, uh, yeah, now we messed with it for a while and then we kind of abandoned the project. And then it was, oh, what, about a month ago, I was watching the excavator uh, rescue, where you guys went and rescued the excavator, the, the bulldozer. That's what it was, it was the bulldozer. And that's where he said, if you're in anywhere in the Utah area and you know some old abandoned equipment, and I was like, okay, absolutely have to email because this is old, this is abandoned, and it was gonna be scrapped. They were just gonna take it to a scrap yard, and hey, if you guys can make use of it, even if you can just make a YouTube video out of it, have a good time, come out, see, uh, I'm all for it. So here's the deal. Anytime we do these recoveries, we gotta go out and check out the equipment, figure out what it needs, right? Like, we're not gonna be able to get this thing started unless it has fresh fuel, you know, fresh oil, fresh batteries, all the essentials. So that's what we're gonna do first. Just literally make sure it's got the best shot of starting possible before we can even flick the key. Plan is, the issue that we have is the motors on these things. <laughs> Someone's dog? That guy didn't fix it. <laughs> that was the last. That was the last team that came. Motors are buried on this thing, so we gotta pull off all the covers, both the big gull wing hoods and then the rear hatch. Once we get that off, then we'll have more access to be able to get in there. Because the biggest thing we gotta figure out right now is how to get uh, into the injectors or somehow get into the cylinders so that we can get some lubrication in there, try to free it up. It ain't gonna be easy. So basically the issue we have right now is to be able to get any penetrating lube into the cylinder, we either have to go in through the injectors or through the intake. And the injectors on this thing are buried, so basically what we're gonna do is pop the intake off, and that gives us access to be able to spray lube in there while also pushing the valve down to be able to fill each one of these cylinders with a ton of penetrating lubricant. We wanna get as much PV blaster down in each cylinder as we can because with those big pistons pushing against the cylinder walls and the rings just kind of like oxidized in there, if we don't get that thing lubricated, there's no way this engine's ever gonna spin over. They don't, they don't. Valve cover gaskets are coming out in pieces. Dave said not to worry because the new gaskets come in a tube. Piece of cake. All right, Dave. And because the excavator has been sitting for so many years, it's gathered a lot of surprises on top, which means as we open up all these covers, all this dirt is falling down inside this open engine. So, luckily, we had a shop vac. Paul pulls out the shop back. What are the shed. odds of a freaking shop back? What are the odds of everything he pulled out of that Connex? Freaking wild. We're in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, man, it's been nice to have a shop back. He's like, all right, I got you. He had the Mary Poppins 
Connex of all Connexes. And then he had ultra powered trailers. Yeah. This like best case scenario mm -hmm. when it comes to working off grid. Blast mm -hmm. in. I hope it's spelling. I don't think Pete's the last one. I have a theme oh, song. Oh, yeah. I just think. I'm more comfortable. Well, it's all about comfort. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, as he sits on top of the cap. <laughs> this metal's getting a little hot here. <laughs> Someone get me a sunshade up here. <laughs> Jim. That's the seal we need. Turn the vacuum. Do we want to run some rags in there? Uh, we'll put our stuff in. first. Okay. Pull these yeah. old brittle. Dude scooting boogie. What's in there? Pop it right out. Then I'll yeah. Have you put the Mitsubishi starters on any of your heavy equipment yet? Mm -mm. They come out with a brushless starter. Brushless starter. Second, second time I've been. The size of those walls. He doesn't ever need to even work out. They just happen to be like. So good news is we got a ton of PB blaster into each cylinder. Um, in fact. We almost got to the point where we sprayed too much because it was just taking it, like literally just drinking it. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that now kind of working its way around the rings, hopefully that's going to free up all the metal that's just stuck on itself in there. So now we're going to head back to the crank and grab a big pry bar, grab the key, and try to crank it and pry on it at the same time. And maybe if we're lucky, it'll just free up. Good job. A little bit. We could rock it back and forth. Hey. Built like a wind <laughs> Uh, that socket with the breaker bars doesn't have a good rotational point there. Yeah. You know what's tough was finding a way to get enough leverage to spin that motor. We had me and Hunter hanging on a pry bar on some bolts that we had hanging out just barely and we bent the pry bar. Yeah. Jeez. So after our first attempt at trying to crank this thing over, obviously it's still not moving. So here's what we need to do. We got to figure out a way to get more leverage on the crank. But in the meantime, we're going to throw one more round of uh, PB Blaster in each cylinder mm -hmm. to keep it, you know, letting it simmer and soak and loosen up in there while we go find a much bigger bar. Obviously, in order to get more leverage on this crank, Hunter's got to pull the front balancer off. And then what's nice is we have six huge bolts that mm -hmm. we can bolt some sort of metal plate or some sort of adapter onto um, to be able to get this thing to spin. So now that we finally got some bolts in there to be able to get some leverage on, we got this big square bar. We pinch it in there. It's enough to actually grab. We're hanging on it and we're bending the bar. Yeah, you bent the rod. So we're both hanging on. Mm. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, good. I knew that putting that much leverage on just two bolts probably wasn't a great idea, and it wasn't because now we have two. <laughs> now we have two bent bolts, and we have the giant square rod is bent, which means we're moving on to angle iron. This guy potentially might. We got this big piece of angle iron. We were just hanging on it, and it is not budging. I mean, this piece of angle iron is heavy, plus the weight of Hunter, plus the weight of me, and everybody else trying to get their hand in there to push it. Yep. I've never seen this done. As we were sitting there trying to figure out, like, man, what are we going to do? We started looking at options of going into town and having, like, a custom uh, plate cut and built so that we could put on there and get more leverage. And then I started looking at the balancer, and I thought, we should just try to spin that. So we took it, put it on the workbench. Again, these guys have tons of tools, which is super helpful because we didn't bring drills or any of that stuff. Um, and we put a hole in the top and the bottom of the balancer. And then we bolted chains to it. So the goal now is to basically take these two chains and pull them in opposite directions to be able to rotate that motor. And the way we're going to do that is by hooking the chains to these giant binders that we use to tie down the equipment. <laughs> we talked about what we're doing. I'll sit in here. Um, hold on a second. <laughs> Right. 
And as we start working on it, it's working, except for the whole engine is starting to twist literally off the motor mounts. We are putting a ton of stress and there's no real good spot to put these chains or hook them to. So they're hooked underneath the machine, but as we continue to pry it and, and, and work each binder, it's kind of a slow painstaking process. And then bam, the engine spins over freely. Have you seen Kevin Hart's? Oh, oh, oh yeah. When Kevin Hart's making fun of the rock. Oh, boys! Oh. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Move it every time now. Everybody do the crank crank dance. Oh, chica, oh, chica. Hey. You think you still need the bar? Probably, probably not, <laughs> Hansel. <laughs> Do the crank crank dance? Oh, look at the speed of the crank now. Whoa, baby. Okay, so auctioneering is all about rhythm. Rhythm, so. We better slow down with your mic, over. Yeah, yeah, slow down, guys. Holy smokes. You run away from us. Hey, da 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 Hold on, this might be too good to be true. So we unhook all the chains and stuff. Go, Hunter, go! He's always coming in. Like I love the two strokes. Go up to the cab, bump the key, and she spins. Fire right. Whoa! Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Easy, guy. <laughs> Guys, real quick, I realize that what we're doing right now, standing here, answering questions, giving information, feels very uh, kind of TV show-ish. That's not the purpose. What happened was, well, you see, when we were doing all this work, we got really excited to do the work, and we forgot to tell you guys what was going on. So we have a ton of really cool clips of us you know, doing work and stuff like that, but if you don't know what you're watching, you might be like, this doesn't make any sense. So please bear with us as we give you a little bit of narration. I don't think we'll have to do this in every vlog, but if we ever get carried away and forget to tell you what's going on in the moment, well, we're gonna have to come Unless back here. Unless you want us to do it in every vlog. You know, just yeah. put it in the comments below if you Actually, like this or not. That's a great idea. Yeah. If you like this format, where we kind of take some time outside of the moment to explain to you what's happening in the moment, we'll do more of it. That's right. In TV, they call this an OTF. Yes, yeah, uh, on the fly. Yep. Well, I don't know what that really means. I'm I don't on, either. So we're not on the fly right now. Not at all, we're very, Relaxed. Yeah, we're exact opposite of on the fly. Yeah, we're prepared. Oh, well, there's a fly right there. <laughs> All right. Good. Yep. So here's the deal, we get the excavator running. The motor is fired up. We threw the biggest Hail Mary in history yep. by getting those chains on the crank and it actually worked. Um, and it's running pretty good. I am noticing though that it's a little bit underpowered and it's smoking quite a bit, which means there's still some sort of mechanical gremlins. Um, and then I go to work the controls and it's just boom, just bogging down like crazy, which is to be expected for a hydraulic system that's sat for you know 10 plus years. But I'm also realizing that the pedals no engagement there so the tracks aren't going to walk i'm also trying to swivel the motor trying to pivot the machine nothing and then on top of all that 
even though the boom's moving up and down, it's starting to piss hydraulic fluid everywhere. Everywhere. So we've got this massive hydraulic leak. We've got an engine that's slowly dying, and then we've got a tractor that won't move. And then you hear a. <laughs> and she choked. Get, get the binders in the chain again. Uh, I think what happened was we had an injector possibly get stuck open or the pump was sending too much fuel. Literally, I think we hydrolocked the engine with fuel. We got the excavator started. Can't believe we actually got it running. Uh, it was running good for a second and then all of a sudden it just quit. The tracks weren't working even when we did have it running. The only component that was working was the boom was going up and down. So either way, what we're going to have to do is probably pull the gears out of the tracks um, and then I got to run down to town and grab a loader the big loader to be able to uh, get these things on the trailer. So while I'm out doing that, uh, Hunter and the guys are gonna work on getting the gears out of the tracks so that we can freewheel them. This is, this is a true observation. Had to stop at the truck stop. One of the most awkward moments in the truck stop is when you go in the bathroom. They were, they were clean, totally clean, nice. But you stand there in line and a bunch of guys are waiting to use the stalls. It's this really awkward exchange where you're all standing in line and you know that you're all going in for, you know, number two. Same stall. <laughs> yeah. And not only do you stand there awkwardly with each other, but then when the guy that's in comes out, it's like, hey. do, you, do you nod at him? Like, are you supposed to be like, hey, hey. So it's all these kind of these grunts and stuff and the next guy goes in. It's it's a truck stop thing. <laughs> really torn up. It is. I was thinking that when I was standing there. 